Now I know it's incredibly exciting when you're thinking about getting your own Labrador Retriever and they're incredibly cute when you get them as a puppy and then you quickly realise just how infuriating it can be when they will not stop nipping and biting you and everybody they come into contact with. So how do you go about addressing that and dealing with it as quickly as possible? Well that's exactly what we're going to look at in today's video. Now guys, having a well behaved Labrador Retriever like my mate Riley here is an absolute joy. But if your Labrador is starting to bite or nip or you've got a new puppy and it's biting or nipping and it's driving you absolutely mad, then that's completely understandable. But the thing is you don't have to live with it. You don't have to have a Labrador that's constantly nipping and biting and it is something that you can get past incredibly quickly if you follow my three steps to success when it comes to stopping your Labrador from biting or nipping. Step number one is that you absolutely must challenge and correct the undesirable behavior. It is an incredibly important piece of the puzzle. If we love our dogs, if we want our dogs to be happy and successful, just like Uncle Sully is here, we have to have the ability to effectively communicate to them what it is that we do want from them, but what it is that we don't want from them. And in this situation, nipping and biting, if it isn't gotten on top of, if it isn't dealt with quickly, can cause significant problems in the long run. So we have to communicate to the dog that that's unacceptable. Break, and to do so, we challenge that behavior, we correct that behavior. And depending on the age of the dog, the sensitivity of the dog, the temperament of the dog, the type of correction that you're going to need is going to be very different. Some Labradors respond incredibly well to an active correction. That could be with a verbal correction, a pet corrector spray. It might be a touch correction. It might be a slight correction on something like a slip lead. But we have to have the ability that as soon as they make the bad decision to mouth, bite or nip on things that they shouldn't be, we swiftly correct that behavior and make it very clear to them, hey, you can't do that and I need to stop you doing that because I love you and I care for you and to set you up to succeed and to keep everybody around you safe it's my job it's my responsibility to effectively communicate that to you now for some Labradors respond very well to a more passive correction where you may hold their collar incredibly sternly hold them in place and wait for them to calm down and they do not get released until they have calmed down and relaxed. For some Labradors, that is an effective way of communicating to them that that behavior that they're displaying in the nipping and the biting is unacceptable. But to do that, it has to be assertive. It has to be confident. And the vast majority of people, in my experience, have better success with administering a more active correction and to swiftly deal with it, get it done and dusted and out the way so that we can move on to these next two steps to then be able to set our new dogs, our Labradors, older or younger, up for massive amounts of success. Now, the fact of the matter is we have to have empathy and understanding for our beautiful Labrador companions. And the fact is that they explore the world with their mouths. And especially when they're teething and growing up, it's incredibly beneficial for them to be chewing on things. It's a very natural canine behavior. So it's our responsibility to, yes, communicate to them the things that they shouldn't be chewing, but now we go to step two, where we should be redirecting them to things that we do want them to chew, things that it is okay for them to mouth on. It is okay for them to relieve their teeth pain on. You don't do it on my fingers, on my hands, on my clothes, but you can do it for X, Y, or Z. Now what that is can be completely up to you. I or I have right now a training toy. So if they were to be mouthing on my hand, I would 100% correct that behavior. The reason that they're displaying this well-mannered patient behavior is because we've been working through this process since day one. And Uncle Sully understands that it's not acceptable to jump up me, mouth at my hand. What it is that I do want from him is to sit quietly, patiently with good manners and wait for me. And if he does that, then he's going to be rewarded by access to something that he does want to chew. And they can go and have fun and between the two of them, they'll play with that, they'll mouth on that, they'll chew on that. And that is an incredibly fun process for them. Which then segues us really nicely into the third piece of the puzzle. And that is to reward them when they are chewing on the desirable thing. Now for some dogs, especially Labradors, the act of being able to chew on something like that, or on one of my Fenrir hammers, or chasing a tennis ball, or giving them a bone, is a reward in and of itself. And the act, all we have to do is let them know 
don't chew on this, but if you don't chew on me, you're going to get to chew on this thing that you absolutely love. For some Labradors and for some dogs, you might need to go a little bit beyond that. When they are chewing on the right thing, we then further praise that. We further reward them for doing that. So we're making it abundantly clear. Do not do this. That is chewing on me my hands, my feet, my clothes, my guests, my children. That is unacceptable. And I am going to challenge you for doing that. But I love you and I'm fair to you and I want you to succeed. So it's my job to teach you what it is that I do want you to chew. So I'm gonna offer you those things instead. And then when you are chewing on those things, mouthing on those things, biting on those things, I'm gonna praise and I'm gonna reward you for doing so. So over time, the bad behavior of chewing the wrong thing comes all the way down. The good behavior of chewing the right thing goes all the way up. So we now don't need to correct our dogs anymore and we have the ability to reward, praise and reinforce our dogs. But without having both pieces of the puzzle, neither is successful. We have to have the ability to communicate what we do want and what we don't want. If you only ever correct your dog, you're gonna have a fearful, anxious, stressed out dog. If you only ever use praise and rewards with your dog, you're gonna have a confused, anxious dog that sometimes knows what you do want but has no idea what you don't want. Provide both things for your dog and you'll have a happy, fulfilled, content dog that looks up to you and trusts in you as its loving leader, just like our Labradors here today do. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to learn more about one of my favorite breeds in the world, the Labrador Retriever, make sure you subscribe to this channel because it's exactly what it's designed to do. And I can't wait to see you on the next episode.